साधु 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 नमो तस् भगवत अरणतो समुद नमो तस् भगवत अरहतो समुद नमो तस् भगवत अरहतो समुद Homage to the blessed one, the worldly one, the supremely enlightened one. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Here the moment. Last week we learned one of the sutra from the Udana Pali, and today also we are going to discuss. Sutra from the Udana Pali. It is very short sutra so uh, because it's a spontaneous reply, the heart heart reply from the sayings from Supreme Buddha. We're going to learn uh, what it means and how can it relates to our life. As only two verses, two standards are there, but beautiful meaning, and it is uh, related as much as for the monks. For the lay devotees also, it works the same way, and we are both in the same boat to uh, want to escape from the suffering and go to the toward nibbana. And this sutta uh, can uh, help us toward that. This sutta Supreme Buddha explained uh, in this way: "Evang me sutam, as I have heard, ekam samayam bhagava." उसी नाराय विहरती उपवत्तने मल्लान सालवने सो दिस सूत्र नेम इज कॉल्ड उद्धत्त सूत्र एट टाइम द बुद्ध वाज स्टेइंग इन द साल फॉरेस्ट एट मल्लास उपवत्तवन नियर कुसी नारा एंड नाउ तेन कोपन समय इन संभवला भिक्खु भगवतो अविदूरे अरण्य कुटिकायां विहरती Viharanti, couple of monks also, or several monks, uh, they were also staying nearby where the Supreme Buddha was staying. So he can see them far up. And so up uh, uh, there, uh, in the small small cottages, these monks were also staying. Uh, staying. Their nature it is mentioned here. What? Udhata, Unnala, Chapala. मुखरा विकिन्न वाचा मुट्ठसतिनो असंपजाना असमाहिता विभंत चित्ता पाकत पाकतिंद्रियाँ तो दिस इज़ द नेचर व्हाट बुद्धा मेंशन अबाउट देम व्हाट इट इट्स मींस दे वर रेस्लेस इंसोल्ड पिकल सरिलियस डूस्टांग Unmindful, lacking situation, uh, situational awareness, and uh, immersion with straying mind and undisciplined faculties. So, uh, this is the meaning. This is the uh, nature of those monks. In all of us, like we are also practicing in the same way. All of us, time to time, these things continuously happen. So we 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 not been everyone every bit of this in our life, but yes, there are a lot of times that we have as uh, as householder as uh, as we've been living in monasteries also. Time to time, we become restless. You know? So one thing we cannot pursue continuously, one thing we cannot have that. So there is that uh, constantly changing of mind. The physical nature is our us. Uh, today we are thinking about this. Tomorrow we think. Today we make this mind, and tomorrow we think something else. That is also, uh, and then constantly blaming, blaming someone about for all our decisions, about all our worries. We try to pin that on someone else, or 
which time started to make some words or uh, the blaming nature what we have. It is always there. It doesn't matter where we are staying here or we go in somewhere else also. That happens there. Then loose tongues that we cannot have the control in our mind or uh, whatever it comes in our mind that we utilize in this words. It is nature. It is nature. Um, and then we feel also guilty a little bit and we are sorry also. So Buddha says, nearby him, in the Buddha's time, it was this, this, this happening, this kind of monks staying in Buddha's time. There were enlightened beings also. There were most humble, Sari, Pitta Bhante, Mughalan Bhante, Ananda Nanda, Rahul Bhante. These were all the monks who were there. But in the same time, there were monks who has this nature also. This nature also. They were there too. So, for this Dhamma is for everyone. So, it's time to time, Buddha teaches the Dhamma for everyone can get help from it. They were unmindful. They did not have that uh, what is happening nearby them or Buddha was staying very close. They don't understand that. You know? Uh, how to stay, how to dwell surrounded with the people. Like the Supreme Buddha mentioned that, okay, you become a Sannipatita, Vayankarani, or whenever you gather because only two things can be happened. You Only two things can be done. What? You should talk about Dhamma or you should mention the noble sign. This is the thing. So the situational awareness also, these monks were lacking in that. In they were in gathering, but they do not have these things to discuss also. Uh, stay in that way. And uh, straying minds, it means constantly traveling, traveling here and there. Like today they are doing the meditation, tomorrow they are doing something else. Today they want to do the uh, gardening, tomorrow they are doing something building something. So this kind of continuous changes were seen by Buddha in the nearby monks. Other sabho bhagava te sambahula sambahule bhikkhu avidure aranya kutikayan viharate Supreme Buddha saw these bhikkhus who were having this kind of nature what kind of nature? Uddharte, restless, unale, transparent, you know, chapale, pickle, mukhare, those tongue, vikin navache, harsh words they utilize, harsh words, those words, mukhasatino, dull minded, sampajane, not aware, asamahite, not concentrated in their mind. Vibhanta chitta, it means constantly the mind is straying somewhere else, engaging in different, different things, different, different way at once. Path is in the day. And not completed the proper mind that we needed to be practiced the Dhamma. If we look at these words, it may be a little bit harsh to see, but this is our also nature. This is nature of us also. And we can change that. So Supreme Buddha saw that and immediately utilized this, this spontaneous word. This udan comes to the Supreme Buddha. What the Buddha says? Arakhite na kaya na micha detti hate na cha thina mida vibhute na vasang maras gachati unguarded in body. Going by wrong view, overcome with dullness and drowsiness, you fall under the Mara's way. What is the Arakhitena Kain then? Arakhitena Kain means unguarded in body. So, this body is not only just that what we see here, you know, it has a different, 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 different portions of that that we can divide it into a couple of ways. Arakhitena Kain, so the, all the six senses, our eyes, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind, not to guarding this six sense, that also 
in 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 uh, if you explain in more so not being virtuous that virtue what it does our precepts what it does it guards our body it guards our this body perhaps uh, stop us from the killing things stop us from stop us from the doing wrong things stealing so this also uh precepts help us to guard then food also what kind of food we consume what kind of food we consume how much quantity we have what is the consumption behind that that also affects guarding our body you know so the tongue factor is there also it's not about the effect of the food but how we consuming it how we taking it and that's why uh, when you observe the eight precepts for seal days we also as a monk also and you also have to chant that thing patisampayo so pindapatam patiseva neva davaya namadaya namandanaya vibhusana the food what we am going to consume that is not to make this body it is not for the amusement it is not for to do the exercise or um, build something you know not to beautifying this body but the true purpose of this food is only to maintain this body to get rid of the previous suffering or the hunger and not the new pain arise in that moment to continue this holy life this this food can help me for that that is the only purpose that i am consuming food by that what we are doing we are guarding the body of when that not happen then it is unguarded body unguarded mind then it goes the speech also the words what we use it is also through the our body you know so what we make the comments regarding body or we looking at our surroundings those things also we utilize the words in different different way and that effects on us in a severe way sometimes we use the harsh words and people suffer for by that for long long time then that suffering also that pain is also causing also sometimes we do we say some wrong words and we also feel immediately guilty oh i should not have said that i should not yes sometimes we are unable to ask forgiveness for doing such a thing but inside we still feel guilty every time when we see this person we say oh i said something wrong to him i should not have that is also happened through this body so what would the saying unguarded in body the person this monks what they were doing their nature was it's not guarding the body they were doing the, all these things they were their nature was something else and to this is unguarded body so what are what is unguarded so they are not guarding their six senses they are not guarding their precepts they are not practicing the precepts they may be but not in the extent what requires to become a tight or by food those make you know those are kind of food. in buddha's time also there were monk they were saying oh it's a, the evening time the food is very delicious you know so buddha should not make the rule that oh monk should abstain from eating at in proper time they were against on that couple of monks but when the buddha teach the dhamma in proper way they understand there were monks who had the different different portions of eating then speech so all all four kind of speeches what we use the lying harsh word the uh, divisive speech and ideal chatter we use that is also on that in body and then intoxicating words with a different different substance that is the, if someone loses uh, someone take the intoxication you know drugs or those kind of things drinking what happened nothing this cannot not a single single uh, our 
uh, sense we can guard from everything of our life entirely become junk. Buddha made these precepts for monks also, because in that time also, people were doing those things, what were what we are doing today. And Supri Buddha said that, that he cannot be helping for us to escape from the uh, uh, this samsara. That's why. So unguarding, uh, unguarded body, it is in all the manners. Our six senses, our practicing precepts, our food, how we eat, how we consume, then uh, our speech, what kind of words we use, to whom what we are saying, respectively, unrespectively, you know, uh, and then our intoxication, uh, intoxicating. By doing these things, they were unguarded in body, the Buddha says. Second thing is ruined by wrong view. Mitcha dikti hate natural. What is the mitcha dikti? What is the Michha Dikti then? Michha Dikti, it in, in Attakata it is mentioned, Saswata. Saswata means uh, that I am going to be in this world always. Not only just this form, maybe the form changes, but my essence will be here and always, always I will stay here, you know. So that is called Sashvata Mitcha Dekyo. This is today I am in this body. Tomorrow I will take the different body. And then after a different body. So when these things happen, they always think that I will be in this world only by taking the human form or the heavenly form. I will have the comfortable life. That's only they see. They don't see the suffering behind that. So Mitcha Dekyo Hate Nachan. The Mitcha Dekyo, what we say, all the wrong view, the Nati Dinna, Nati Dinna, Nati Dinna, Nati Sukhata Dukkata Nakta Mana Palanki Papu. The worldly wrong view, what we learn, that wrong view also it is there. Micha Dikti. So there is no result of generosity. There is no result of serving some. There is no result of sacrificing some. There is no result of our uh, actions. Which is reserve, uh, which is give in the happiness and suffering. They don't believe that. Nati Mata, there is no mother, there is no father. Nati uh, Satta Opapatika, there is no spontaneous beings, spontaneous God beings. There is no uh, this world, there is no other world. There is no teacher who learned this Dhamma himself and liberated from and teaches for the liberation. Believing that there is no one, uh, that there is no, no, no this results on that thing also. There is no escape from this. Someone has created our life. They are, they, they are pulling the strings. We are just to live our son. Nothing is in our control. Everything is predecided. Isn't this kind of things is in surrounding in us? Isn't that thing the people say from time to time? Oh, everything is written about. Everything is written in heaven. We cannot do it. This is our destiny. This is in our. This is in our karma. Let me see. That is what is it? It is called mitcha dikti. We are not giving credit to our, we are not blaming to our karma. Neither we are giving credit. So what is it? That is mitcha. No worldly mitcha, no worldly right to or There is no, means uh, uh, the four noble truths. Regarding that also, there is a mitcha. There is a, some different kind of suffering also, they mention. There is the origin some of the time. It says to them, oh, it is not always that what Buddha says, you know, so in the monk's precepts, there is a one thing that is mentioned. A couple of months, so Buddha says, this is antaraika dhamma. Antaraika dhamma, it means obstacle to practice dhamma part. 
ठीक है सो व्हाट बुद्ध मेंशन दिस इज ऑब्स्टिकल फॉर यू टू प्रैक्टिस इन दिस वर्ल्ड देयर इज नो वन हु कैन से यस दिस इज नॉट द वे दिस इज नॉट द ऑब्स्टिकल फॉर मी टू प्रैक्टिस दैट such a thing such a if the bhikkhu says that thing or buddha says this is thing and it is not obstacle if this monk mentioned that for him he has to confess that oh what the buddha says i have uh, changed that words in different way and i should not have said that the confession is there also miccha dikchi is that also what the buddha says this will cause a problem this will stop you from learning dhamma this will stop you from growing in dhamma this person says oh i am very strong i am built for that i have learned dhamma i do not need any assistance i do not need any guidance i can do this by my own self such a view also such a view also sometimes Come and fall into this mitcha that he can achieve. Dharma can be achieved alone. But to this condition, in Buddha's time, these monks were staying very close to the Buddha. They can see Buddha. Buddha can see them from uh, its footing. And this monk, by staying very close, their nature was that. Today, already two thousand years has passed, or two thousand five hundred six hundred years has passed. From Buddha. How much changes in society we can see? That time, the diversion it takes, the mind changes. When some monks goes to the city or in the town, what they see that is today. Continuously, our phone is there. Even you are staying in isolation, there is mobile. Immediately changes our, you know. So the body is not guarded. Our mind is not guarded because several everyone is trying to tell you, or oh, this is the thing that you should learn, this is the thing you should acquire. And name of the Buddha, many things can be changed in there. So how can we understand what the Buddha mentioned? How can we understand which will be helpful for us? It is come. It is learned through the. Noble friends, that we have to learn, or that we have to. Learn. So, mecha dikti, the wrong view. It is not only just that not believing in that, but whatever supporting to away from us from dharma, that also exists. If we are learning dharma, and the others words, no, it is. I have already learned. Nothing is there. No, you cannot learn from there. Someone mentioned that. What is it? It is the roots of the mitcha that is falling. Someone said, "I do not want to go anymore in monastery. No need to do that anymore. I have learned what I needed. Now I don't want anything from them. What is it that I can cross over alone without help?" Noble friend, that is not possible because one day the Ananda Bante uh, said to the Supreme Buddha, Bante, this half of the path of Dhamma is with help of, with with associated with, with by dwelling uh, in the Kalyana Mitras, half of the path can be completed. Buddha immediately stopped him. Ha ha! And do not say like that. Ananda, do not say like that. Not the half path of Dhamma, but the entire path of Dhamma can be crossed, can be complete with the noble friend, with the help of noble friend, with the association of noble friend, with the dwelling with the noble friend. Entire path of Dhamma is completed. But if someone say no need of guidance, no need of associations. What it means? It is also the sign of mitcha mitcha end. That we should learn. That should we should understand. Next thing, Supreme Buddha mentioned: "Chena mitta vibhute na, chena mitta restlessness, 
dullness or, or dullness or drowsiness it is there it happens after eating a lot of food so the bath mother you know when we eat food that happens it is the drowsiness dizziness comes to us but some of the lazy nature what we hold what we have built that lazy nature that is also there seen a meal here oh it is very early now i will wait a little bit and then i will start to do it is very late today i will do it tomorrow you know just i eat food i am hungry someone visited us someone is coming to uh, our family in these are the excuses for that we make that is called seen a meal even the active person in that group even the working person if that person is making excuse for like if someone is wanted to do the meditation you know, so 10 minutes can be sufficient but what our mind says of oh, 10 minutes i don't have 10 minutes anymore that we are not going to do anything we don't have any work but we say 10 minutes is very means i don't have that what is the sign of that that is also sign of the nature that is also sign of laziness because initially especially that thing happens for dhamma practice especially that thing happens. if you are staying you know, if you are traveling somewhere most of time what we do now there is a short videos on youtube or instagram that is there you know shorts i reels i think sort of reels they say so the reels Are there short videos? Are there? What is it? This? It eat. It consume our whole time. But in same moment, if we ask, okay, do the ten minutes of meditation while you are sitting in the bus. How several hundreds of excuses we can create. Hundreds of excuses. What is this? In Buddha's time, also that. Abhi vute na. It means. Overcome, filled with this kind of nature, filled with that, keen amid da with your tenderness, dullness and laziness, it's there, created with that. Even for the practice, so today I have done this kind of practice for a couple of months. I am practicing eight precepts. I can take the gap. I can take the relaxation for a little bit, and for a little while. Such a thing also stops us from the going forward, and that is also comes in the category of inability. And we should know. Vasang mara sagachati. These three things, if someone has in their life, what arakita kaya? It means unguarded body. Mitcha dechi going by wrong view, and Keen need them, the dullness and drowsiness overcome by that. If these three signs are in our life, vasang mara sagachati, such a person falls in this net of mara, or he is mara's way, he fall on the mara's uh, grass. Mara can capture him. For who? These are the nature. Any dharma practice, common world in the, in the simple world, the Buddha always say, if I mention that because of true ignorance, because of avidya, the whole world has these things. But if someone wants to escape from this suffering, for such a person, if the this is the, for such a person who want to learn dharma and liberate himself. For that person, if this unguarded body is there, going by wrong view is there, filled with dullness and drowsiness, the laziness is there, then this person is in still in the smell of mar. You know? This is still this capture. Uh, he is captured in the mara's net. Uh, is caught there. You know? That would be mentioned. For whom these monks were saying their their behavior. Their actions, their nature, what the Buddha saw, and what he says, oh, they are still in control of Mara. Later, Buddha says, "Tasma rakhati chitta sir, 
tasma rakhat ki tas such a person uh, or that's why the you should guard the mind what we should do we should guard our mind how we can guard our mind how we can guard our mind guarding our mind through the help of dham that is only only through that so for the guarding mind different different kind of meditations would the mention there different different kind of meditation like uh, buddha says asuva asuva meditation fullness of body in uh, fullness of food that is also there you know then uh, when restlessness is there or different kind of thoughts are coming so buddha anusati dhamma anusati sangha anusati that kind of meditation buddha mentioned sila anusati chaga anusati devata anusati what does the it help us to guard our mind from our worldly things prakita chitta guarding our mind samma sankappa gocharo samma sankappa gocharo it means uh with the right thoughts and passion right things nikamma sankappa avihinsa sankappa abhyavad sankappa these are the sankappa or you can say yes i am in this world i want to liberate making that strong determination is also one of the sammasanta not sammasanta but sankalpa is there making strong view yes i want to escape and for that what i should do i should guard this make karma sankalpa renunciation okay give up avyapad avinsa hatred and ill will on this kind of i want to guard myself from the enemies samma dichi pure karu samma dichi pure karu and right view at the core with the help of right view by the completing of right view so what is needed there to guard our guard our mind have the strong determination and sambhaditi right view the worldly right view and noble right view also what is worldly right view there is a result of generosity so everything what we do even when we are helping our family members when we are cooking food for them what is we are doing we are doing generosity in that form but as a common world what we think or oh, this is duty of us it is duty we think is like that no you can change it yes i am helping so i am practicing generosity in that so little bit not in much quantity but in smaller form that's the samadhi chitra to right view there is result of generosity there is result of uh, helping someone there is result of sacrifice there is a result what i am having happiness and suffering it is result of my own karma that is a worldly right to do that thing we lack lot then there is a worldly right to that there is a mother there is a father there are beings who were born spontaneously there is this world there is another world there is a there are teacher who can taught this dharma so others can escape from it that is mentioned there that samadhi then there is a suffering noble truth of suffering everyone in this world is uh, except there is a suffering but very few people understand there is the origin of suffering is also there why this suffering is there it is there is very few people 
everyone says, oh, it's a God's creation. That is the balance that God has created. If you are feeling happy, you should suffer also. You know? Some of the time, oh, this is consequence of our action. But as soon as you pray to God, as you and we worship the Lord, as soon as you do the sacrifice to our goods, everything can be erased. Everything, your destiny can be changed. Such a beautiful whole, but that is wrong. Samma Dikti, noble truth of suffering, origin, noble truth of origin of suffering. What is the origin? Amatanna, Bhavatanna, Vibhavatanna. There's three kinds of desire. These three kinds of desire is the one which creates soul suffering, what we are doing. Entire suffering is because of these three kinds of desire, three kinds of lust. We are unable to understand that. So what does Samadhi do? It gives us the idea, yes, this is it. Third, third noble show, cessation of suffering. If, if it is created by myself, then I can get rid of myself. My destiny is in my own hand. If we think that, if we do that, the beautiful thing, then the path which leads to cessation of suffering, noble eightfold path. How it begins? It begins with samadhi purakha. With the help of no samadhi. Nyatvana udaya bayam. Nyatvana means knowing or understood, rise and fall. Udayatvayam means rise and fall. But what, 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 what is the rise and fall? This, everything. Tanha, lust, desire, hatred, which rise in our mind and then it falls also. Birth and death, that is also right. Everything is changing with the changes of this, you know, with the changes of our contact. Everything is changing. That is also rise and fall. Nothing is permanent. Nothing is constant. Constantly changing. That is the thing. Understanding that. Tina Mitta Vibhu who has given up or overcome of dullness and drowsiness. With the three things, someone can fall into the slay of Mara. What? Arakhitena Kaya, unprotected body with the wrong view and with the uh, theme, with the drowsiness and sleepiness or dullness. That. With that, person can fall. But if someone wants to escape from him, what they have to do? They have to guard their mind. They have to have the right uh, determination. Samma Sankalpa. With the help of right view and knowledge of everything is impermanent. Everything is changing. Nothing is our control. That kind of mind. And who has overcome the enemy, the drowsiness. Sabba Dubda such a person would cast off all the bad destination. Such a person will never reborn to the bad destination. Where it will go? Where this person will go? This will go to the heavenly world or into the liberation. That is only in see. These are the spontaneous words. These are the Udana, hard words saying of Buddha. By looking at this monk, what Buddha says? Oh, they are still in slave of Mara. Their behavior, their nature is there. But Buddha immediately, always, whenever he says, he gives the problem and tells. Buddha shows the problem. This is the problem. Because of this, this is the person is falling. And immediately, Buddha gave the result also, or answer also. If someone do these things, that person can be free. First stanza, Buddha mentioned how someone fall into the Mara's Slave. Then Buddha says, if someone is doing this kind of work, 
then he's liberated. He's free from all the painful world, all the suffering, you know, all the painful destinations that we should have. So Buddha's words are not good. Buddha's words are truly gives us the path to understand. So remember this, read a couple of times you know, and try to guard our body and try to understand our mind. You know, in does it still dwell in our life? Do we still have the Micha that we investigate in our stuff? Try to get rid of Dinamita for you and for me also the same. That is there. And we should try to guard our body. We should try to guard our mind. We, sh we should have a strong determination. Samma Santalpa. We should understand the importance of noble uh, Samma uh, So the worldly and noble also. And uh, knowledge of constant knowledge of constant change in our life be always aware of that nothing is permanent everything is changing such a thing we should have in or nothing is permanent nothing is permanent it doesn't mean that we are not getting anything serious you know if some oh, nothing is permanent why should I do this thing why should I do this? not like that it is changing, but it is still in our control. Our destination is in our control. What I should create, that is in our control. Neither our mind always leads toward bad. That so, remember this sutta, the restless of Uddhata sutta, Sutta Vida mentioned here. May this sutta be helpful for all of us to understand how the someone can fall into the Mara's leg. May this sutta be helpful for all of us to understand how to overcome the bad destination. May this sutta be helpful for us having noble association and realizing the four noble truths and without them with our dispensation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. I hope that you understand. So it's a very simple sutta, but I was in, thinking about that uh, the body, how can it the uh, only one fact, you know, so all the things can affect on that. So we can uh, initially give the, you know, one more small, small uh, understanding of that. Oh, body is not just only to guard our eyes or not just only our ears, but how we eat, what the mind set up behind that also, and what can cause the difficulties. Those are also things. In Amidda is always. Uh, we are all suffer from that and getting rid of that, it needs constant effort, constant practice also. So as, as long as they exist in our life, we are still in the grasp of Mara, still. But once we start to overcome of that slowly, slowly, we can escape from that. And for escaping, we need the help of noble priests. We need the people who have the same vision to walk. 